it's important that we practice cultivating curiosity. And this can be a challenge for many of us if we find ourselves to be a little bit introverted or to be out of practice from socializing. It's important that curiosity is what's fueling this interaction. We are not in this interaction because we want to talk about ourselves or because we don't really care what their answers are. Both of those are going to lead to the conversation petering out. So how do we actually cultivate that curiosity, Michael? Well, I wanted to say through curiosity, but uh, that would be a circular argument. So I'm going to say that um, go into a conversation and try to get into the mindset of the person you're talking about. So uh, for example, um, Justin Brewer talks about the concept of deprivation curiosity versus exploration curiosity. And deprivation curiosity basically means um, I need a simple answer to something because I lack the information. What is the time, right? Exploration curiosity is let me find out more about this. This is someone who might get lost in Wikipedia researching something and then ending up somewhere completely different because all of this is so interesting. So to give you an example here, I might ask you, AJ, uh, where are you at right now? And then you say, oh, I'm in Italy. So that would be deprivation curiosity. My, my lack of information has been satisfied. Now, this is not going to make a really good uh, conversation because, of course, now I want to know what brings you here, what, what brought you to Italy, where in Italy are you, are you enjoying the food? Um, of course, now again, I'm, doing, I'm demonstrating the question train. So we're not doing that. So I'm asking you, where are you at? AJ, and you tell me you're in Italy, and I would make a statement and say, oh, wow, I've never been in Italy. What's the food like there? Is it really as great as I've heard? Right? And now I'm exploring. I'm putting on my Sherlock Holmes hat, and I'm finding out things about uh, the topic we're discussing, uh, which is, by the way, it's always a good idea to pick topics that you're actually interested in. If I had heard that you were on a fishing trip I might not necessarily necessarily go very deep there, but I heard so many great things about Italy that I really want to know a lot about it and how AJ fits into that context, how your life looks like in that context. And what I love with that example is you admitted through vulnerability that you'd never been to Italy and that's okay. You know, so often we find ourselves trying to seek out similarities and if we don't have anything in common or we haven't experienced that or we don't know about that food or we've never tried that sport, all of a sudden we feel like, well, we're boring and we can't talk about it. When in actuality, just saying, hey, I've never been, I've never had that drink, I've never heard of that movie, I've never seen that show, is a statement. It's a statement that showcases some vulnerability, adds a bit of yourself to the conversation and creates some breathing room between that next question, that follow-up question with your Sherlock Holmes hat. And I will walk away from that interaction being like, wow, Michael's never been to Italy. I'm going to have to throw out a trip to Italy in the future so that he can get to experience this great food, right? So that is a key part of the vulnerability that we're sharing with that statement. He listened to my answer, which is really important. And then he utilized my answer in a way through a statement first before asking that follow-up question to really fuel the conversation forward. And also think about how much credibility this answer gave to my further questioning you. I have never been in Italy. Please tell me everything you know about it. That is not to say that you can't ask questions about things you're knowledgeable in. Of course, you can do that as well. But there's no back. There's no downside to have, to saying, "Oh, I don't know anything about this." Because now, you know, here comes my Sherlock Holmes head. Let's go there. And because you are in Italy, there must be a really good reason. So this is something that, especially if you chose that voluntarily, which I believe you did. Um, I'm tapping into something you obviously like. Mm -hmm. 